You want to see how I take all this wood, three sheets of plywood, and make it into shoving like Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how. So let's get going. It's quick, easy, simple. I made a jig in the link here if you want to check out how to make a jig to use your saw to rip large pieces of plywood. Large stock. You want to rip it down to more manageable size. Check it out here. Otherwise, I'm going to get these down on the ground, get my jig set up, and start cutting these to about 18 and an eighth. So let's get going. The shells are 18 inches deep. So mark 18 on here. If this is the piece I was saving, I'd have to add. This is the piece that I want 18 inches, so I'm going to butt this right up against that line. If this was the 18 inch piece that I was keeping, I would have to add about 16, 3 16, whatever width is of my blade. So I'm just going to bring this up to there. With all my shelves cut to width, all 18 inches, the next step is to give this some structural integrity so it doesn't warp, bend, sag, or none of that. I'm going to put some support underneath it, basically like this. I'm going to run, this is poplar, inch and a half poplar, one on each side, and then the support going across here. Then I'm going to run every two feet another one, so in total I'll have five cross supports on each shelf. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut all my sides to length, clamp them all together, cut them at eight foot so they're all the same length. Then I'm going to start setting up and start cutting the inside supports. I have six of these I got to cut to eight foot lengths, and I got 15 center supports I got to cut to length. So that's the next step. Now I have the chop saw set up, I have a stop block at the other end, I'm going to trim the edge, slide it down, cut it, it should be 16 3 8 I have 15 of these to cut, so that's my next step, and then we can start assembling. Sixteen and three eighths, right on the nose. I have all the pieces cut, ready to go, start assembling, but I'm not sure what I want to do just yet. I don't know if I want to just glue and nail it, or if I want to go to the added expense and time to do some pocket holes. My plan of attack is. 
these are the center supports every two feet eight foot length so I'm going to do a pocket hole on the front and back supports every foot so this will be the end support I'll put pocket hole right here this is the next center support then I go another foot and I'll put pocket hole on this so there'll be one two three four pocket holes on each one of these and on the center supports I just measured in five inches from each side I'm gonna mark them and I'm gonna put pocket holes right there so I'm gonna put them on pocket hole go there just to keep everything secure and flat so there's no chance of warping on my center supports I'm just kind of kind of line them up I'm measuring five inches on this just so I have a reference point. Doesn't have to be exact. Five inches there. Five inches there. I'm just kind of butt these up where they look decent. Don't have to be perfect. Like I said, it's just a reference point. Then I'm just going to scroll, mark a line. So I know that's a general area I want my pocket holes at. And yes, I did that for a reason. Yin and yang effect. Push and pull. So I got, I'm making them on either side on every one of these. I want to clarify something before somebody, if they do something like this, if you make a mistake, I'm going to show you why. I don't know if anybody caught this, but I want to tell you. I did this for a reason, one side and opposite sides for the center support. You can't do this on the end because you'll see that hole. That's why six of these for each end of the shelf, I put them on the both sides. But for the center ones, I did opposite because it's that yin yang, you know, pull, pull and push and pull type of thing. To me, it just makes sense. So there's some things I do and there's a reason why I do it. So don't forget if you're doing this, if you're going to do them on both sides for the centers, do not do it for the ends. Otherwise, you put this on the end, you're going to see that. That's why the end pieces, both pocket holes, are the inside so you don't see. A little note, don't do it and mess up and say, I didn't tell you so. Now we're ready to start assembling. Now I have three shelves per unit. I'm doing two of the shelves this way. The bottom shelf, I will actually use three and a half inch stock on the bottom to get it off the ground and also to give it somewhat of a cabinet look with the toe kick. But the middle shelf and the top shelf are going to be assembled in this fashion. So what I'm going to do, we're going to glue it up. I'm going to set it on here, line it up, put some clamps on it, kind of go down the row here, make sure it's flush here, clamp them down, I'm going to flip it over, throw some nails in it, when it, I know it's not going to move, then I'm going to put the screws in. It's all dried. I have the screws all in, center pieces are in. So now I'm going to go around with my trim bit and I'm going to take off this little edge on these two sides so it's all flush all the way around.
That's nice. I'm gonna go around this whole thing just to make sure everything's nice and flush on it. Then, uh, actually, this one's done, and I got four more to do. Now, the bottom shelf I am doing just a little bit different. I'm going to use the two and a half inch stock, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a toe kick. This is only two and a half inch stock, so I'm just going to go in two and a half inches. That's what it's going to look like. And this will be the toe kick. So I'm going to do the same thing I did for those shelves. Pocket holes. Glue, nail, and then screw it. Now on the, the side supports, I'm using two and a half inch stock for the front and an inch and a half for the side. So it'll be on the cabinet or on the shelves like this. I'm going to go a little big in case I want a little extra leeway. So I'm going to cut these at 43, glue it to this before I cut it down to size. So I'm going to cut this down, glue these two up, then I actually need to go to the store and get more wood, but since I lost my wallet, I got no cash. I got to wait. <laughs> I got to wait for the wife to come home from getting her hair done to get money to go. I, the cash I had, I gave her to pay for her hair being done. But kind of sucks. <laughs> so let's cut this down to 43, glue it up, and then I basically have to wait. thing for moving. Now, the rest went down at every about every six to eight inches I'm gonna make another nail. One down, let it dry. I have it set exactly where I want it. It's squared. I got it set exactly square right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to glue, clamp, and nail for the two corners on the front parts. Let that dry a little bit. Clamp it on the bottom so it doesn't move. Flip it over, do the back side. I let this thing set overnight. I just got too busy, <clears throat> too busy with stuff last night. So, I'm going to just undo everything. Then I'm going to clamp the bottom pieces to the sides. I'm going to flip this over, and uh, we'll glue the other side. <coughs> the ends, I'll get this centered, these two pieces will be the air support under here. See how that's tight? See how it moves? That gives that air support to keep that from bowing at all, keeps everything nice and straight. I've rechecked the squareness. It's still dead on. I am a 30 second off. That I can deal with. 
Now I'm going to take these ends off. I'm going to glue them, clamp them, nail them to the other side, and then we'll get that center support in. Now that I have everything clamped, glued, and nailed, I'm going to give it about a half hour, take all this off, give it a quick sand, I'm going to set it up so you can see, and then basically I'm just going to do a Thompson water seal on it, just so you can better see. Now this is a shell, it's complete. And you see the toe kick. It's like cabinets. Secure base, but it's got a little toe kick in it. Inside, these are doubled so they will keep this nice and secure and keep this shelf from any t chance of bowing. It's going to keep it solid. Same thing with this second level, same thing doubled them up all cut the same length so it keeps this center from any chance of swaying it just gives it support bottom of the shelves got the extra support gives it some integrity they are solid they won't warp sway or anything keeps them nice and secure glued and screwed all i have to do is take my nail gun i'm just going to nail these in sand this so this edges are smooth Give this a once over, and this is complete. Looks good. All done. Now that's it from beginning to end. A few basic steps, basic tools, and again, look in the description if you want to see how to make that jig for your saw. I have a link to it. Also, check below in the description that has all the information you're going to need about this. Any questions, leave them below and I will get back to you. Uh, I'm going to go in and relax, then i got to get this to my customers, so always I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch. Thank you so much in advance if you do subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. I will tweet out when these projects come out or anything else I'm doing in the house, upgrades, or maybe even a tool or two review. I just have a few things that I'm kind of upgrading that are coming in. I appreciate it if you subscribe, click the notification button again so you will be notified when the videos come out. So if you are interested, it gives you a heads up if there is something that may interest you. And that's what I do a lot of different stuff. I'm not just tool specific, project specific. I do everything. This is all about life. Things you got to upgrade, improve in your home, plus just getting your own time to go out to your garage, your shop, your basement, wherever it is and do some projects for your own peace of mind. So with that, again, thank you so much for watching. Be blessed, get out there, take back your shack. Follow me as I take mine back. Build it for a friend. Always build it for family. Most importantly, just get out there, have some peace and quiet for yourself. Build it for your sanity. See you next video.